This tutorial will show you how to remove periodically repeating patterns from images using Photoshop. Specifically, this tutorial shows you how to use version 2 of the Fourier Transform plugins by Ronald Chambers and the accompanying action set made by me. A download link for all the files you'll need can be found in the description. Inside the downloaded zip file, you will find nine files. To install, close Photoshop, then copy the DLL file located here into your Photoshop directory. Press continue. Then you navigate to your plugins folder. Then you select the six plugin files and copy them over. Press continue. Finally, the actions, you can double click and they will open up in Photoshop. The actions panel in Photoshop can be found under window and actions. I placed mine here on the side. You should have a folder called Pattern Suppressor version 2. Optionally, you can load the actions from the panel menu by choosing Load Actions. To use the pattern suppression actions, you start with an image that has a repeating pattern covering the entire canvas. You then need to choose which type of processing you want. The action is divided into grayscale, color per channel, and color 3D. We'll get back to these color processes later, and for now I'll just use grayscale because there's no colors in this image. The grayscale actions will process the luminosity of the image and discard any color information. You then choose if you want normal suppression or aggressive suppression. For most images, go with normal. Aggressive can be useful for images with very large halftone patterns, for example, but it will destroy a lot of fine details in most images. So I'll just use normal and I'll press play. The first times you run these actions, it's highly recommended that you read the messages that show up so you know what to do. I'll just press continue and show you instead. The action will then perform a whole bunch of steps for us. Uh, let's just wait until it's done. And then it'll give us instructions for what to do next. What we see here is roughly what you'll see after running the action. You'll have um, like a black cross with a bright spot in the middle and a bunch of these black little stars all around the canvas. The layer you need to focus on is this one here called star suppression. It should already be selected and even marked with green just in case. Before we continue I'll just turn it off and tell you what's actually going on and what we're trying to do here. So this is what the uh, action generated for us. This is the image represented as a bunch of frequencies and their amplitude is shown as brightness values. So these bright spots here are very strong frequencies, which is what the repeating pattern is. So to remove the repeating pattern, we need to suppress all these bright spots all around the image. And that's what this star suppression layer does. Basically just covers up all these bright stars. There is a preview layer here that sort of exaggerates it and makes it easier to see. That's all this preview layer does. So it's easy to see where it is applying suppression. Now there's a lot of important image details encoded in this central star and this vertical and horizontal line. So those should not be suppressed. But as you can see, the action is covering up those as well since they are actually bright spots. So what you need to do manually now is reveal this entire central area and the two arms. To do that, you use a black brush. It should already be selected. And we paint on the layer mask of the star suppression layer. You might have to pick the correct brush yourself, but then you basically just paint. I'll just hold shift to make a straight line to reveal this central cross and the central star. Might be a bit hard to see, but there's actually a lot of little pixels being suppressed near this star. We don't want that. Just choose a bigger brush. Make sure I paint over this entire area. There we go. If you don't do that, you'll lose a lot of important detail and your image might look bad. Now, some of these bright spots that we are suppressing actually overlap with these central lines. In that case, you want to suppress those areas. So I revealed a bit too much here. So to cover something back up to suppress it, I switch back to white and press X on the keyboard. Just choose a smaller brush. And I just paint over them to make sure they're properly suppressed. It's okay to lose a little bit of these uh, lines. The most important thing is that you cover up the highlights or these uh, bright stars. 
I think that's all of them. Once I'm happy, I go and choose the apply suppression action and press play. And there we have it. As you can see, the pattern has been removed. We can inspect the results to see if we're happy. You can ignore this padding area around here. It's got lots of weird stuff going on in it. You can ignore that. We'll crop that away in a minute. I'm actually quite happy with this result. Don't need to change anything. So then I just choose merge and trim and press play. You'll then be left with only two layers, which is basically your original image and the processed image. This means you can compare them easily and yeah, I'm very happy with this result. This is all you need to know to get started, to try it out for yourself. Uh, but I will now demonstrate using a color image and then finally move on to more advanced techniques and tips that can be useful for problematic images or when you need to go back and forth a bit to find the best suppression. So here is my color image. It has a color halftone pattern going on and also a little bit of repeating paper texture. With a color image, we either choose color per channel or color 3D. The difference is that color per channel processes the RGB channels separately and the 3D version uses a three-dimensional Fourier transform where the RGB channels are the X, Y, Z coordinates. It doesn't really matter. The result will be pretty much identical with both versions, but I find it a bit easier when you have actual color patterns. I find it a bit easier to work with the 3D version, uh, but if you have more of a monochrome image, then the color per channel might be better. Just like before, we start by selecting the normal suppression and press play. This is a large image, so it will take a little while. In that case, just be patient. It will finish. You just have to wait a little bit for the processing to take place. You'll notice that the color actions look a little bit different than the grayscale action we used earlier. The process is generally the same, uh, but we'll just work on the left half of the image. We still have this star suppression layer covering up all these bright stars. But notice that the central star that earlier was located in the middle of the image now is on the left-hand side. That's important. So we just grab the brush tool like before. I'll just zoom in a little bit so better see what I'm doing. And I reveal this horizontal line going through the middle. Careful so I don't... Uh, that one I want to keep. Go. And the vertical line now runs on the left hand side here, so it's a bit hard to see. There we go. And I grab a bigger brush. I'll actually, zoom in a little bit to see better. And I reveal this central star. All right, there's a couple of bright spots here that should be suppressed. So I just choose a small brush and white. Maybe there, I'm not sure. I just work my way along the edge and oh, whenever I see something funky, I suppress it. It looks, uh, looks quite good. Okay, so once I'm happy, just like before, I apply suppression and press play. Again, for a very large image like this, it takes a little bit of time, but uh, just have patience. The results will be worth it. Again, we inspect the results. I think this looks uh, very good. So finally, I choose merge and trim. If I zoom in, we can see before and after, before, after. This type of pattern suppression is unfortunately not magic, so there are some limitations to be aware of. If we look closely at the before and after of this image, you can see here on the highlight in the eye here and on the brow, the pattern doesn't quite match the rest of the image. And what happens then when we suppress the image? We actually gain a pattern in those areas. If I look before and after, this little spot here that didn't have a pattern actually gains a pattern. And the pattern here in the highlight in the eye actually just changes to a pattern that looks like the pattern we are suppressing. So just be aware of those limitations. And you could actually use layer masks and combine the old and new image and uh, work around it that way. Residual patterns like this are usually more prominent on high contrast edges. Let's look at another image, this time with a very 
heavy halftone pattern. So on this one, I'll choose aggressive suppression and it's a black and white image. So I'll use the one under grayscale, press play, wait for it to process. And there we go. Since I chose aggressive suppression, it's a bit more heavy handed. It suppresses a lot more, but again, all we need to do is use a black brush to reveal this central line. And you can use white if you reveal a bit too much. Let's try something like that. There we go. And you need to reveal this entire central star. That's very important. Oh, choose black. So including these flares that you see run through here needs to be revealed. That flare contains lots of useful image information and if you remove it you'll destroy your image. So keep that visible. There's also some highlights here quite close and I'll try to cover them up. I don't quite know what they are yet but I'll just cover them up just in case. It's usually a safe bet if you see some bright spots cover them up. Okay let's see how this look. Apply suppression. I see here that the image looks good for the most part, but this fence up here looks really bad. It seems you've accidentally tried to suppress the fence as the fence is actually a repeating pattern. And this is a problem you might encounter in your images. So I'm not happy with this result. I want to make some changes. Luckily, the processed image is just as a separate layer here on top. And if I'm not happy with it or want to just try something else, I can just either delete it or just toggle it off and then go back to my layer mask and continue working. I suspect that it's actually these bright spots quite close to the star here. They were quite faint. I suspect they might actually be the fence. So I will remove the suppression by painting with black brush. There we go. So I can see the original bright spots. And then again, I choose apply suppression. A look at the fence and that looks much better. You can see I still have the old layer here so I can toggle it on off to compare and clearly this is a lot better. So I will just delete the one I don't want. There we go. Using this method you can track down what the various uh, bright spots in the image do and which ones you need to suppress through trial and error. A tip for locating the correct spots is um, that horizontal patterns like the fence, are generally located on this horizontal axis. Vertical patterns, on the vertical axis. Low frequencies, which is large objects, are usually closer to the stars, while very fine patterns, per pixel type of patterns, are far out towards the edges. Finally, if you think the normal suppression is too weak and the aggressive suppression is, well, too aggressive and removes too much detail, you can actually change this the only difference between the two is actually the settings of this curves layer called strength. The most important difference is how much of the highlights are being clipped. So on the normal suppression, it's clipping and removing some of the suppression. And on the aggressive suppression, it's just suppressing everything. So if you move this one in a little bit, we now have a less strong suppression. So if you want something in between, feel free to experiment. For more technical information about how everything works, have a look at the readme file included in the download. Thank you.